of his mother right after she died. So um, he converted it uh, into a more contemporary photograph with blue dyes, blue inks. And then I took this painting from that. So we also have this uh, sort of family relationship with the original coming along into uh, and onto, onto this grid. It's called Dantean Circles. And you can see the grid-like pattern in it, the sections going across and down and so on, blocking, blocking uh, certain details in and allowing certain uh, figures and uh, other sorts of things like the tower to come out. Um, so in, in, in a sense, it's like cartooning. I did a lot of cartooning as a child. That is comic strips. I was fascinated with comic strips like children used to be. Um, so here we have Dante, uh, translated into more or less the present time. This is Beatrice on uh, roller blades and uh, Icarus also on blades and Dante himself on a skateboard. This is supposed to be the greyhounds in the very beginning of, uh, of the uh, book. There, there is a greyhound that brings, uh, brings the people into, into the layers, the uh, circles of hell. First, I did a horse here, and then I realized that wasn't right when I went back to the text again and again. I couldn't find a horse mentioned, but I did find the greyhound. So the horse became a greyhound. So there are a lot of things like this in my paintings, where one thing has to become something else. There are a lot of people out there, um, uh, and Anselm Kiefer, of course, is one of them, and I have taught uh, Kiefer in my uh, in my theory painting and theory classes, and so in a sense, some some of the painters in this building have grown, ha, their painting has grown up with Anselm Kiefer, understanding what he was doing and why he was doing it, uh, being German, uh, and living in the aftermath of the of the Second War. Uh, he, his feeling for uh, the suffering Jews is, is tremendous, uh, but he didn't sit around, you know, uh, moaning that fact. He studied uh, Kabbalah and uh, the ancient Hebrew texts and all sorts of things to come to to the heart and soul of uh, of the Jewish people, and so a, a good deal of that has come out in his paintings. Um, uh, paintings after Auschwitz and, and the Holocaust. Uh, he uses symbols like uh, railroad tracks going into the distance, which is one of the things that connotes that pain, suffering, and death to Anselm Kiefer and his work. And uh, of course, a, a great deal of sensi sensitivity has grown up around his work and in people coming to terms with it, understanding it. Uh, quite a few books have been written about his work. Uh, and um, there are a lot of uh, Jewish collectors of Anselm Kiefer's work. So uh, he, he's one, in a sense, a mentor, I suppose. Never met him, but uh, I certainly admire his work and various other people. Uh, uh, including uh, Marlene Dumas, who is a contemporary woman painter living in Amsterdam. And my class and I went to MoMA to see her one-person show, which was important to me because I wanted to see what her paint looked like, you know, what was the thickness of, of the oil, how did, she, uh, how did she maneuver her brush, and so on and so forth. So the, these are people that I look at very intently, uh, talking about uh, vision, talking about learning how to see. This is also very important for painters to look at other painters, 
Rarely does it happen that a painter will come and actually examine the paint of another person. The title is 2666, and it's from a book by Roberto Bolaño. Uh, he um, lived in Mexico for many, many years. He also lived in Spain, he lived in Paris, he lived in North Africa, and so on and so forth. Um, he originally was Chilean. Um, he died at a very young age, and this book, 2666, was published posthumously. The book is done in parts, and the parts represent chapters, chunky chapters, uh, that deal uh, in some sense with books and book titles and the authors of the books. So that's why I'm concentrating along the top of the canvas on the, on the books. There's no shelf. The books are just sitting in the air like that. Um, and then along the bottom are all of the uh, villages, the small towns in the Sonora, uh, Sonora desert area uh, south of the border uh, in North Mexico where um, many, many murders uh, took place of uh, young women and girls. Um, a good deal of them raped and killed in various ways, so uh, it's supposed they were Copy, uh, copycat murders, uh, and it also has to do with a lot of uh, people uh, that the reader suspects of being guilty of these crimes. But you have amorphous sort of characters going across the top that can't uh, quite be identified, and they come from different periods of time, different sorts of costumes and facial features and, and so on, all rather indistinct. Um, and they represent probably uh, professors, uh, uh, ambassadorial sorts of people, um, uh, heads of state and uh, people high up in police departments and military uh, uh, affinities of one sort or another. In other words, all of these people. Who is, who is really guilty? Of course, one never finds out in a book by uh, Bolaño or in many of the books being written today, just as you will never know from looking at this painting which is the guilty party.